Hey guys, it is 12.10 and I am finally getting ready for the day. Both the kids are napping. If you can see, this used to be Ashton's room. We're doing some rearranging in the house just to try to make it more functional for us. We're currently in a rental. It is going on our third year in this house. We thought we were gonna be here for six months and here we are three years later. So I don't know, but I wanted to film a quick get ready with me. A lot of you have been asking about my makeup go-tos and hair and all of that. So we're gonna go from this to this, a little bit better, right? <laughs> So I washed my hair yesterday and then I just brushed it out and then usually it's very hot right now so usually I'll just put it up in a clip like this. Um, so it's just kind of is what it is. It's not super curly. Often the back will get so, so curly. You can see the frizz but it's not like that super curl like it normally is so that's a good thing. Um, but first up I'm going to do my makeup. So I'm just gonna put my hair back up for a second whilst I do this. So I have my Merit Complexion Stick and I'm just putting this underneath my eyes. Obviously you can tell the color is a little lighter than my skin tone. So I'm using it more for concealing. I love, 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 love the consistency of it. And then on my face, I'm putting on the Ilia Skin Tint and I'll link all the products below in the description as well as the shades that i'm using so before i blend out the come on come on before i blend out the concealer complexion stick i put this on top of it and then i kind of blend it all out together so that is what i do i make sure to push it up into my hairline because you don't want your makeup to stop like right here, you know? It looks kind of funny. And then the extra product, I drag down onto my neck. I don't really put any extra on my neck. I just kind of drag it down. And then I try my best to go kind of light, have a light touch, because I don't want to be like, you know, yanking on my skin too much. But um, yeah, I just try to kind of be gentle with my face because we only get one skin. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm doing this all looking in my phone so I can't even see if it's blended. Hopefully it is. Okay, now I'm just going to take a little bit of powder. This is It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores. I like this one and I also like the Thrive one and I just have a fluffy brush and I'm just gonna kind of just brush a little bit of it. I'm not like wiping it because I don't want to take off the makeup I just put on so I'm just kind of you know, what, what, what do we call this, stippling? I'm at the age where my skin is entering the more mature <laughs> phase of life. I don't have any filler, any Botox, I've never done any of that. I have no problems with it whatsoever. It's just for myself, it's not, that's not it for me. And so I'm aging as gracefully and naturally as I can. And um, that being said, I like when my skin has a little bit more shine to it because I do have some fine lines and I do have some discoloration from pregnancy. So I'm not trying to hide any of that, but I do want to enhance the parts of my skin that are nice. So I use this Merit bronzing stick a lot. I don't think I'm gonna use it today. I just don't feel like it, but it's a cream bronzer and it's super nice, but it's just not, I'm not feeling it today. So I'm gonna go with my Ilia bronzer and I just have this angled brush and I'm just gonna kind of, again, I'm not gonna like wipe it cause I don't wanna wipe off any makeup. I'm just going to stipple it. We'll say stipple. I feel like that was a big word back in the OG makeup video days. But see how nice that is? Oh, I love it. And it lets the, I don't think that this, maybe it has a little bit of shine, but it's not a shimmery bronzer, but I do love that it lets a little bit of the glow and the shimmer shine through. And I love to look like I have been out at the beach for five months, <laughs> something like that. So we're going around the hairline. Again, I'm pushing it up into my hairline because <laughs> Anytime I kind of forget and then I have like bronzer and then white scalp, it looks so funny. I also love a good amount on my nose because I like to look a little sun kissed. Like the sun has just been basking or I've been basking in the sun. Um, so yeah, that's that. So same bronzer, 
I'm using like this really big stubby brush and I'm just gonna put a little bit of bronzer on my eyelids. I have also been growing my eyebrows out again. So they look pretty terrible, but you know, I'm trying to get them back to a point where I can go get them threaded and they'll have a good shape. So we'll see what happens. And then I also put a little bit of this bronzer underneath my lash line. So this is one of my favorite blushes. It's Rare Beauty. This tube, I think it expires in 12 months and I 100% will have like more than half the product left when it's expired because it is so concentrated. I'm not even gonna put it on my face. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my hand and then I'm gonna pick it up with a brush and put it on my cheeks because it is so pigmented and so strong that it's just, it's wild. It's a great product, I love it, but it's almost like, dare I say it's almost too pigmented? Like if you were to put this, anytime I have put just the smallest dot on my cheek, it's way too much. So anyways, that's my only complaint about it. Also, I love a good amount of blush. Bronzer and blush, anything that makes me look like I've been in the sun, I'm like, give it all to me. All right, now I'm gonna take this purple eyeshadow stick that I think, oh, it's just Sephora brand, and I'm just gonna do kind of a little bit of eyeliner slash a little kind of wing sitch, you know, super, super, I don't know if you can see it. I'll come closer in a second. But with my green eyes, I love purples. So you can kind of see just a little purple on the outer corner. It does a little something, something. I don't know where my eyelash curler is, so I'm not gonna curl my lashes, which I usually do. Ashton is the age where she loves makeup. She's like really starting to get into it and she wants to come in. Obviously her and I are very different coloring. So when I'm like putting on face makeup and she grabs the brush, she'll like wipe it and it just looks like, you know, a fake tan or something on her. It's so cute. But I have a feeling that she grabbed my eyelash curler. So we're just gonna roll with that one today. This is one of my favorite mascara. This is my favorite drugstore mascara. I think my favorite mascara of all time is the Thrive Cosmetics Lash Extension, I think it's called. Funnily enough, we lived next door to the founder, the creator and the founder of Thrive for a period of time up in LA. She was so nice. And this was at, I feel like this was at the beginning of the brand and she, basically they moved in, so we dropped off a little welcome neighbor present, you know? And then she retaliated, not retaliated, reciprocated, and sent over a, like a whole basket of cosmetics and was like, thanks, so nice to meet you. And we didn't spend a whole lot of time, you know, talking, but she was so nice. We're pretty much done with the face. Good enough for me. Sometimes I'll do a little um, highlighter and sometimes I won't. Today I'm going to just because I love this highlighter. This is Merit Beauty as well. And I'll usually just take my two, my middle finger and my ring finger and literally just put it on like this. And then just, so nice, so nice. We gotta love a glow, especially in the summer, you know? And then I usually do a little line down the center of my nose and maybe a little here. I'm just going crazy for you guys today. Okay, and that is it. I also love this dime tinted lip balm. So I'm just gonna put on a little bit of that and then my makeup is done. And honestly, this, I think I've been recording for like probably close to 15 minutes, but when I'm not talking about it, it takes like, I mean, maybe five at the most. So anyways, face is done. Also, you'll notice I didn't do anything to my eyebrows. I hate doing my eyebrows. I should brush them at the minimum. I just don't like doing them. I never have. That's the only thing, well, maybe not the only thing, but one of the only things I miss about not working anymore I when I was modeling and acting is you have a makeup artist and they would just do it for you. And then afterwards I'd be like, Helen, let's go to dinner. And I'd want to go out because I was like, everything was done and looked good. Um, but I just can't be bothered to mess with my eyebrows. I have thought about getting them, what's it called, microbladed. I know they're not thin, but just to kind of even out the shape, but we have yet to do that. So onto hair, 
My curling iron is not on, let me turn it on. Okay, while the curling iron is heating up, I asked if you guys had any questions. So let's answer some questions. Okay, this is a great one. Do you take both kids with you alone places sometimes? If so, how? I'm scared too. So yes, I do. I will say that majority of the time, I feel like Kellen is around. So it's the two of us and the two kids, which obviously is so much easier because it is man-to-man -man defense. Um, <laughs> But I do take the kids out by myself. We go to the grocery store, we'll run errands. Um, what I will say is it takes so much longer just because you have twice the car seats. Um, Ashton's getting to the age now where she can kind of climb up into her car seat and she can do the, t the chest strap and then I'll do the crotch strap or the buckles and make it all you know tight and good. But she can kind of help me out. Kaysen is still, he's not even one yet, so he definitely requires me to be completely hands-on um, I can see it it already is getting easier so I'm sure in one year from now it'll be like no big deal okay curling iron is hot we're gonna go for this you can kind of see a little bit how coming out of my scalp it's a little wavy it kind of looks like I used the wave machine or a crimper this is incredibly mild compared to how it often is but basically what I'll do is I'll take I mean a decent sized piece but you can kind of see the wave going on. So what I do is I bring my curling iron all the way up to the root, drag it down a little bit just to kind of get it to straighten a little, and then I curl it up to my root, pulling away, using tension because I'm trying to smooth this root area. And then what I will do, so I'll leave it for, I don't know, five to 10 seconds maybe, and then I'll, I'm so bad at explaining this, but hopefully you can get the visual. I will let it go, keeping it clamped, curl back up. Let it go, curl back up, and then pull the end out. I hope that made sense. Okay, we're gonna do another question while I curl my hair. So this one is, do you feel it's hard to share certain view types in case you lose followers? So I am now at the age where I have realized that it, it Well, I never really cared about followers, but I understand the question and I understand let's change it instead of followers. Let's say that you lose friends for your view types. The thing that I can definitely say now is it is so much harder to live a filtered version of yourself or a version that you hope other people like as opposed to living your own personal convictions and then dealing with the consequences that come from that. It, it's it's an overused phrase, I feel like, but choose your hard. It's hard, I've heard the example, like it's hard to you know work out and wake up early and eat well and drink your water, but it's also hard when you don't take care of your health. And as a result, you have health issues. You develop diabetes or autoimmune diseases or you're overweight. So it truly is, there's no easy way in life. There's simple paths, but there's nothing easy. And so I just think that, that a lot of that comes with age now in my mid thirties, going into my late thirties, that it is much easier, if you will, or simpler. There's a lot less that you have to keep track of um, if you just live your personal values and, and beliefs. So no, it's not hard to live out my beliefs or my values because the alternative to that is to try to make everyone happy. Okay, I've moved to the other side. So I'm doing the exact same thing. I am curling it up to the root with some tension, trying to smooth out that root. If you have wavy or curly hair, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, be grateful. But anyways, I just keep it clamped. You can even let go of the clamp altogether. But I keep tension and then I just pull the end out. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to the next section. Depending on how much time I have, sometimes I'll just do bottom and top. And if I have a little more time like I do today, I'm gonna pull down another section and then do, and then do the top. Um, so that's like a total of three sections. If I'm not talking about this, I can do my whole head in probably 10 minutes. But when I'm trying to explain it, it's harder. So anyways, let's see here. And it's also hard to do on a phone. But this new section, I'm gonna do the exact same thing as I did before. I'm gonna start a few inches from the root. I'm going to curl all the way up to my root with some tension, smoothing out the root area, those first few inches. 
making sure it's smooth, and then I'm going to let the curl go, but keep tension, let the curl go, move it down, and then drop the end out. And at the end, it's gonna look kind of silly, but then when you run your fingers through it, shake your hair out, then it looks effortless and beachy. All right, let's do another question, shall we? Travel tips for toddlers. So, what I will say, this is the number one tip, because there's a whole lot of tips that you can find. Pinterest will be your best friend, YouTube will be your best friend. But what I have found to be the number one tip, because often when you're looking for tips to travel with your kids, you're looking for how do I make it easier? How do I prevent meltdowns? How do I, you know, all things like that. The thing that I have found to be the most helpful tip is your kids are just spiritually and biologically wired to you and you are their safe place, you are their security, and they are literally sponges and they absorb everything that you're feeling. So the best you can do, if you have anxiousness about flying or about flying with them, they're gonna feel that. So what I have tried to do and what Kellen and I do, and he's much better than me, so, but he helps me check in with myself, is I just embrace it knowing that kids are wild cards. You never know. They might cry. It might be hard. They might have gas. Their ears might not pop. There's a whole slew of things that could happen. But as long as you are calm and cool and collected and just embrace the fact that you're traveling, you can't make it go faster. You got to get from point A to point B, whatever that looks like, whether it's a road trip or you're flying or whatever it is. So if you can just take a deep breath at the top of the trip and just say, whatever happens, I'm mom, I got this, we're gonna be fine. Your kids will feel that and they'll be like, okay, mom is at least secured. Okay, so this next question is a good one because my default as Brittany is I get very overwhelmed. And so this says, what do you do when you find yourself overwhelmed? How do you calm down? And I think for me, I have to check in with myself way more regularly because if I am overwhelmed or getting overwhelmed, oftentimes that just means that I have not checked in with myself. I have allowed myself to get to a point where I feel overwhelmed and I could have prevented that. So for me to prevent that right off the bat, it is spending time in the word, in prayer with the one who is in control because often I get overwhelmed with things that are out of my control and um, or things that I don't feel like I can control. It's like a whole thing. So if I start my day off right, then usually the rest of the day goes better and I'm not quite as overwhelmed. Okay, real quick, when I'm doing my, like the face framing pieces, I don't hold it as long. I kind of just go up and I immediately let it go because I don't want a super strong, I don't want from my scalp it to go right back. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so this is what my hair looks like. Again, it's tough to do this. I missed a lot of pieces. It's hard to do this in a phone. So anyways, this is what my hair looks like. And what I do, I don't let it cool or anything. I just go for it. I just run my fingers through it. Shake it out. And if it looks even enough, I'll just let it go. If there's a couple more pieces that need a little more love, I'll recurl them. But often I will just roll with it because I don't have a whole lot of time. So anyways, this is it. I'm gonna grab some hairspray. I'll be right back. Okay, so the hairspray I currently have is Aussie. I'm almost 100% positive that this is toxic and not great for you. It's in an aerosol can, but I don't use hairspray often and I usually will just spray it after I curl it and then it's good for two to three days. Um, tomorrow when I wake up, I probably will not touch it or put anything in it. I might run my fingers through it or brush it, but who knows, probably not. So I just do a couple little spritzes so that it kind of holds, give it a little body, you know, as you can tell. And this one is a really strong hold, so I feel like it starts a little intense, but then as my hair falls, it falls into a really good place. So anyways, this is it. And this took way longer than it usually takes me. Hair and makeup combined most days is 20 minutes at the max. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. 
And should we do one more question for the road? Let's. Okay, this is a perfect question to end on because it's about hair. It says, hi Britt, I love your hair, thanks. Do you have baby lights or highlights or is it something else and what products do you use? So, you just saw that I use whatever hairspray I have on hand. But as far as shampoo and conditioner, um, I'm not embarrassed to say this, but I know people have really strong feelings about it. I don't know if it's pronounced Monat or Monet. It's an MLM, so I kind of like wanted to stay away from it because you just never know with those things. I have my own experience with another one, um, not hair product, but just another MLM situation. But um, so many, a lot of my girlfriends use it and a lot of them sell it. I bought it off of Amazon and didn't tell anyone, but what I will say, and I'll put a photo in, is that it really has helped my care, my hair. Like I don't sell it, don't ask me about it cause I don't know who to point you to, but I got it off Amazon. It seems to be working for me. So that's what I use. And then as far as the color, so I will, I do a little bit on my own. The last time I got my hair done was probably coming up on six months ago and she kind of balayaged it. And then these front pieces here, kind of like the ones that are a little higher, the the brighter ones I did myself. I've been doing my own kind of little baby lights or highlights since, oh goodness, at least for the last 10 years because I was at a point in my life where I didn't have money to spend on getting my hair done, but you still wanna look good and be confident. So after a few little trial and errors, I figured out what worked for me. And so I still do that to this day when I want a little freshen up, but I don't have time or I don't, oops, my ring. When I don't have time or I don't wanna go sit in a chair for five, six hours, I'll do it at home. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this Get Ready With Me. All of the products and shades are listed in the description below and I'll see you guys next time.